And now on behalf of the GUI, Mr Murphy. Thank you, President. Uh, Taoiseach, given that the proclaimed stability, jobs and growth have clearly not materialised, could I perhaps suggest an alternative slogan for the Presidency? Never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Six months ago, the good story was a recovery country leading recovery in Europe. The unfortunate fact is Ireland's return to recession leading, leading a deepening recession in Europe. Today, the good story is what is presented as a European budget stimulus. The stubborn fact is that this is the first austerity budget in the history of the European Union. It involves cuts of tens of billions of euros, not to bloated salaries, not to bloated expenses, but to funding for workers losing their jobs, to Erasmus, to development programmes and cohesion funding. It will further worsen the crisis. The other good story today, according to the Taoiseach, is the opening of free trade talks with the US. But the uncomfortable facts suggest that the so-called special relationship is built on extensive spying on European governments and millions of citizens. Would the Taoiseach agree that these talks, at the very least, should be suspended pending a full investigation? Would he also agree that Edward Snowden should be commended for his actions and he should be granted asylum in Ireland or another European Union? Describe this as an austerity budget by any stretch of the imagination, by anybody's imagination, even MEP Murphy's. 960 billion euro is a not insignificant amount of money to inject into the real economy of the European Union. And for that reason, this is about real jobs for real people, and it beats any alternative that I've heard proposed from Mr. Murphy's quarter. I might say as well that the trade talks between the European Union and the US have not yet commenced. They are not due to commence until July as was agreed at the G8 summit in County Fermanagh in Ireland. And I do hope that under the current circumstances that the facts that are needed to be exposed here and presented are dealt with and that we can move on and focus on what needs to be done here in bringing to a conclusion in the next two years trade talks that can result in very significant growth in economies and very significant growth in job numbers both throughout Europe and